following presentation from WBOC News contains images of drug paraphernalia that some may find unsuitable for viewing. Viewer discretion is advised. Six months later, these drugs and dealers are still destroying families. They're killing innocent people. You killed my son. Addicts are abusing this poison, rescuers doing everything they can to save lives. We have to give them three, four blasts in order to bring them back to life, and that's if we get them back. But hope remains, communities bonding together to fight back. You gotta try something. Too many parents that are losing their sons and daughters. Some have seen overdose numbers drop. We're still having one or two a week, but there were days we were having four and five a day six months ago. But the fight against heroin and opioids is far from over. This is Hook, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later. And yes, it has been six months since our last report on our drug crisis, and Delmarva is still hooked. And while we have seen great progress in some areas of the peninsula, the problem has spiked drastically in others. And people are still dying every day while fighting their addiction. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Carley. And I'm Steve Hammond. Tonight, we'll take another look at Delmarva's opioid crisis and talk to those who know it all too well. You'll meet new faces living with the aftermath and the heartbreak of addiction. We'll also revisit some familiar faces on the front lines of this crisis every day. And I'll be back here in our call center with professionals you can call right now. Just call that number at the bottom of your screen if you or someone you know is in need of help. Uh, the ones impacted by this epidemic aren't just the users, it's communities and loved ones. Last time, we told you the story of the Wessels family whose young son lost his fight to addiction. We begin tonight with the story of another family that suffered a tragic loss. Here's WBOC's Kimberly Wiggins. Chad was a warrior. Chad was a soldier, and he fought for his country. And he fought in the war of Iraq for 15 months, and he survived that. And it's just so sad to me that he couldn't survive this addiction. Chad Book joined the Army at 19 years old. When he returned to his roots on the Eastern Shore after his tour of duty, his mother, Karen Dolch, says Chad had a hard time figuring out what to do next. He just struggled, I know, with that, with the PTSD, and um, I think he was just trying to figure out what he just wanted to do when it was years before he realized that welding is was what he wanted to do. Karen said it was in 2014 when she first noticed something was off with her son. And he was honest with me and he told me that he had tried it and that, he, but he wasn't addicted and he wasn't gonna get addicted. It was just a good high. And he said, but I'm not gonna let it, not gonna let it beat me. It, and Chad's case was heroin, but he got help through the VA. Karen said Chad was 18 months clean, but relapsed on his birthday. Chad was still determined not to let the drug beat him, assuring his parents he would be okay. Until December of 2017, Chad came by for dinner one Tuesday night. He was dressed nice, he smelled good, and, and he was upbeat, happy, glowing. Like we even said after he left, gosh, Chad looked great. It would be the last time Karen and her husband John would see Chad alive. He was found by a friend that weekend in his home. He had overdosed on heroin and died. And obviously the death certificate came back that it was mixed with fentanyl and morphine. So there's no way Chad would have done that if he knew that. <laughs> It's only been a few months since Chad's death, but in many ways, he is still felt in Karen's home, where she can visit him as she walks in and out each day. And out back, no one sits in Chad's chair by the fire. I still feel his presence. Um, no, I can't touch him, but I can still feel his presence, and we have conversations, which is uh, good for both of us. Two weeks ago, I got a letter from Karen Dolch, a mom from Salisbury. 
She wrote about her son, Chad, a four-year veteran of the United States Army. So I wrote the governor a letter because I had seen a commercial that he did, and it touched me, and I wanted him to know that I appreciated what he was doing for the addicts. There was a personal story between the governor and Chad. I had the opportunity to meet Chad when I spoke at his graduation from welding school. Karen sent me a picture from that day of the three of us, and I have it here with me today. Chad's mom, Karen, and his family are here with us today, and I wanted to recognize them. Karen, Chad's family. I need to make a stand. I need to do something. So I just want to stop the next Chad from doing this, and I know I know that he wants to also do something about this. And I appreciate that. We are really talking about fighting for all of the Chads and the Karens out there, for all of the lives cut too short and all of the families that will never be the same. That's why, no matter how hard it is, we cannot ever give up this fight. The fight, which includes getting people like Chad the help they need and stopping dealers from getting these drugs out on the streets. You're killing innocent people. You killed my son. How could you do that? And how would they feel if their son died from this? In his mission to help those like Chad, just yesterday, Governor Hogan signed additional legislation to help combat the statewide opioid crisis. Among those bills were the Overdose Data Reporting Act, which will allow emergency personnel and law enforcement to input and share data when it comes to opioid overdoses. Also, he signed the Controlled Dangerous Substances Volume Dealers Act. That one allows for more effective prosecution of high-level drug traffickers who deal in large quantities of controlled substances. Now let's toss it over to Jackie for more in our call center. Jackie. Well, Steve, sadly, there are many more young men and women like Chad who are fighting the demons of addiction. But there is hope and there is help. We have people from organizations all over Delmarva specializing in addiction recovery and rehabilitation right here in our call center. And they are here to support you. If you or someone you know is battling addiction, just give us a call, 443-880-9195. Our phone lines will be open until 8 o'clock. Still to come on Hooked, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later, we dive into the progress being made on the peninsula. Everybody knows who the drug dealers are. And so do we. We travel back to Chrisfield, where just six months ago, heroin was really taking over this small city. We also visit Wicomico and Worcester counties to check on the epidemic there. This is Hooked, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later. Welcome back, everybody. Local law enforcement are on the front lines of this problem each and every day. And six months ago, police on Maryland's eastern shore told us things were as bad as they could be when it comes to this epidemic. Today, those same officials say things are a little better, but that doesn't mean they're backing off the issue. We're an example. A small, beautiful community, waterfront. Chesapeake Bay, you got everything to be here for, and yet we have a drug problem such as this. And if it's here, it's everywhere. Last summer in the city of Crisfield, more than 40 people were arrested in a major heroin bust. Police tell us that investigation lasted more than a year. Today, Crisfield's chief of police believes the city is still seeing the benefits of that bust. There are fewer dealers on the streets. But, but if they get out of jail, then all of a sudden we could almost predict that there's going to be an overdose. That's how a small town, everybody knows each other. And everybody knows who the addicts are. Everybody knows who the drug dealers are. And so do we. The chief says while the opioid numbers are down in his city, the problem is not gone. Fentanyl is the most dangerous substance found on these streets, and treating people overdosing from these opioids, especially repeat offenders, is getting tougher 
even with Narcan. We have to give them three, four blasts in order to, to bring them back to life. You know, and, and that's if we get them back. North of Crisfield, Wicomico County has its own heroin and opioid problems. The sheriff's office updates this sign for each and every overdose. But in the last six months, these numbers have changed far less often. The notifications I was receiving on, on overdoses on a daily basis, they're not there anymore. We're still having one or two a week, sometimes three or four a week. But there were days we were having four and five a day six months ago. And while the Wicomico County numbers may be down, the problem persists. The sheriff says heroin seeps into county communities like Salisbury, Whitehaven, and Pittsville, originating from places like Philadelphia, Wilmington, and Baltimore. If you talk to the investigators working both in Accomack and Northampton County, Virginia, on the eastern shore, they will tell you the bulk of their heroin is coming from Baltimore, Maryland. And, and they all have to travel through Wicomico County to get to Baltimore and then en route back to the eastern shore of Virginia. And for police, finding this heroin can sometimes be a challenge with the elaborate compartments built into a car. What you had to do is put your foot on the brake, hit the rear defrost button, activate the cruise control, hit button number two on the key fob, and a steel door would raise up on a piston and allow you access to this compartment. Other times, finding the drugs aren't quite as hard. In March, in Worcester County, during a traffic stop, these two bricks of cocaine and a brick of heroin were found in the trunk of a car. Two men from Florida were arrested during the stop on Route 113 southbound near Berlin. Unfortunately, outside of I-95, Route 113 and Route 13 on Delmarva are major corridors for drug traffickers moving along the East Coast, according to police. To become off the major highways, come off on a secondary area, and people down here, unfortunately, have an appetite for the use of drugs, so some things get dropped off here, too, for people to use to... Um, the illegal drugs coming through here. And in Worcester County, just like other places on the Eastern Shore, the heroin problem seems to have eased up in the past six months. However, quite frankly, you, people can move from one substance to the other. So you might see a drop in one substance and an increase on another substance. So while police say Delmarva may not be as hooked on heroin as it was six months ago, the problems persist, and it wouldn't take much for another drug to begin to wreak havoc on the peninsula. And police in our communities here at home have also been partnering with organizations across Delmarva to help fight the epidemic. For example, tonight in Virginia, the state police and Accomack County Sheriff's Office are hosting an opioid awareness forum with the Eastern Shore Drug Task Force and the Eastern Shore Community Services Board. In Delaware, local police departments are serving as hosting sites this weekend for the state's Drug Take Back Day. Ahead on Hook, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later. He was a mama's boy. He was absolutely a mama's boy. This mom and others joined together, hoping to save the lives of young people before it's too late. But first, we'll take a look at the numbers county by county six months later. Jackie? And the Worcester County Warriors is just one of the organizations police on Delmarva have teamed up with to provide support for families with loved ones who are battling addiction. If you are looking for support, helping your loved one, give us a call, 443-880-9195, and we'll connect you with the Worcester County Warriors or other support groups in your area. Our phone lines are open until 8 o'clock tonight. We're waiting on your call.
You know, back in October, Wicomico and Worcester led with the peninsula's highest numbers of overdose deaths for fentanyl, heroin, and opioid drugs. Today, those numbers are down by roughly 80% in Wicomico County, 70% in Worcester. That's not the case, though, for all of Delmarva. The CDC says the state of Delaware saw a 105% increase in opioid overdoses between 2016 and last year. Much of that increase is due to a drug use uptick in Sussex County. With the most recent numbers available, 42% of all drug-related deaths are caused by the rise of the opioid epidemic in Delaware. Sussex County is seeing the highest number of overdose deaths with heroin, fentanyl, and prescription pills, with 118 deaths. Kent County saw 74 overdose deaths. In the last quarter, numbers are down in both Wicomico and Worcester counties, and Talbot and Somerset counties also saw a drop in drug overdose deaths for fentanyl, heroin, and opioids. Talbot had a total of 14, eight in Somerset. Kent County saw eight overdose deaths in the last quarter, the same as it did in the same quarter back in 2016. Meantime, overdose deaths in the remaining counties were up. Caroline saw 14, Dorchester 16, and 13 in Queen Anne's. Down in Virginia, the state saw an increase in overdose deaths in the last quarter with over 470 cases. That's up from 433 deaths in the previous quarter. The use of illicit fentanyl remains alarming for officials there after seeing a 177% increase in overdose deaths since 2015. And health officials say coming back from a drug overdose involving illicit fentanyl is almost unlikely. The dangerous drug is still becoming more common for use as dealers continue to lace heroin with it. Jackie? Well, Steve, the uptick in those overdose deaths that we're seeing in places like Sussex County is 100% preventable. And if you're ready to get your journey to recovery started, we're here to help. Call our hooked hotline at 443-880-9195. Our panelists are here to support you and connect you with the help you need to overcome your addiction. Our phone lines are open until 8 o'clock. After the break, on Hooked, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later, a Delmarva community's mission to spread awareness on the opioid crisis, one shade of purple at a time. Hooked, Delmarva's drug crisis six months later, in a moment. We'll be back to our special in just a minute. Here's a quick two-minute weather update for you. 59 degrees in Dover. Skies beginning to clear out there right now. Still a few showers in the area, especially in Sussex County, but these won't last more than another couple of hours. And then as this low pressure moves off to the east, skies will begin to clear tonight, and it looks like a pretty nice day tomorrow. Unfortunately, here's our next system. Pretty good little upper level low, much like the last one. It will reach us pretty much by Friday morning, but it will be out of here in time for the weekend. Temperature Temperatures in the mid 60s here in Delmarva, same in Philadelphia, slightly cooler to the north, but the clouds have held temperatures back in the Midwest, generally in the 50s today, although 60s in the far uh, parts of the Midwest, around 65 in Indianapolis. Look at that 76 in Georgetown and Salisbury. We had a little sunshine at midday and the temperature briefly, just for a few minutes, popped up that far. Now, of course, we've cooled down quite a bit. Our weather watchers, by the way, generally around 60 to 65 degrees. Rainfall totals, a few spots had three tenths of an inch last night. Generally, though, Rainfall amounts were less than a tenth of an inch. Temperatures still in the 60s out there. Ginger, uh, 63 in Chincoteague and 66 from Jim. Many feathers and only she had about a quarter of an inch of rain. Right now we're around 65 degrees inland. A little cooler near the water though with 58 to 60 in most areas right now uh, on the coast. The winds are beginning to turn to the west as this low moves away from us. And for tomorrow we should see a really nice spring day with a light west wind, blue skies, sunshine. Then as we go into tomorrow night we're going to cloud back up. You'll wake up to showers in the area on Friday. They'll linger into the afternoon, then we'll clear Friday night. Saturday looks lovely until about 3 o'clock when a front comes through with some brief showers, but that's the only rain in the weekend. It won't last long. For tonight, then, 51 spotty evening showers, then clearing skies late. Looks like a beautiful day tomorrow at 70. Breezy on Friday, 68 showers tapering off in the afternoon, but the rain will be light. 70 Saturday, partly cloudy, an evening shower, then breezy and cooler Sunday, but much warmer weather comes next week. Our special will be right back. Faith-based support organization Square One DE Inc. is just one of the many places offering hope to those who are battling addiction right here on the peninsula. They and other supporters are here in our call center to help. 
If you are looking to get your recovery journey started, just call the number there on your screen, 443-880-9195. Our call center representatives are here with resources in your community that are open and ready to assist you overcome addiction. And as we continue to fight this epidemic, recovery and awareness efforts are underway all across Delmarva. Last year in one community, Talbot County went purple in solidarity with those efforts. And now nearly a year later, people there say they're still going strong, spreading awareness about this drug epidemic. Here's WBOC's Amy Liu. It was purple, purple, and yes, even more purple across Talbot County. It just was, felt united. For some, like Valerie Alby, it's a color with many memories. One Thursday night, I'll never forget. 29-year-old Mariah Alby visiting mom and dad back home in Pasadena, Maryland, is found unconscious, lying slumped on the family room sofa. A moment, Alby says, she still remembers with a lot of pain. You know, it, it was a lot. Mariah died September 7, 2012, and since then, Alby says it's been a long path to healing. Alby later moved to Easton, starting a fund in Mariah's name and finding a community she says willing to talk about the drug epidemic, in part through Talbot Goes Purple. I think that just brings just more awareness. I knew that if we were going to have an impact, that we would have to, it would have to start through education. Talbot County Sheriff Joe Gamble spearheaded the cause, bringing the purple to community centers and schools across the county. We're hearing real good feedback um, from our community. We're still getting requests for people to asking us to talk. Good feedback now spreading the purple well past county borders. Everybody's excited about this to see how far we can take this. So. Queen Anne's County Commissioner Jim Moran says purple is now also headed their way, coming as soon as this fall. You got to try something. I mean, you know, there's too many parents that are losing their sons and daughters. And on a park bench inside Graysonville. Yeah, it's pretty bad. A mother still mourning. He was a mama's boy. He was absolutely a mama's boy. November 4th, 2016, Chris Jones finds her 23-year-old son Brandon in his bedroom, face blue and unconscious, just nine minutes after talking with him. Jones still finds it hard to sleep at night. I deal with a lot of severe depression, PTSD, um, major flashbacks, anxiety. And even with the painted nails and purple wristbands, she says bringing the color here won't bring much change. It's not going to stop the epidemic. A color, not necessarily a solution, but one Joan says she's still willing to try. It is better than nothing. Purple now spreading across the eastern shore, hoping to save lives. Reporting from Queen Anne's County, Amy Liu, WBOC News, Greasonville. And hoping to save lives is exactly what we are committed to doing, as you've seen over the past half hour, though we are taking the proper steps towards ending this dangerous and deadly drug, drug epidemic. The fight is far from over. We are still losing our family, our friends, and our communities. And one life lost is one life too many. You still have time to speak with one of our call center representatives for assistance. Thanks for joining us here for the special edition of WBOC News, Hooked. Delmarva's drug crisis six months later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good night.